Hi guys, it's Nancy, and this is my first fairy stamper video. Um, so this is my first time playing with fairy hug stamps. I just got a new set of them, and I want to show you I got kind of the aquatic theme going on here. So let me show you what I have, and then we'll play with a couple of these and try to make a beautiful card. So the first one is called Oscar. He is a big, beautiful octopus. Oscar the Octopus. These are Fairy Hugs stamps made in the United States. Their um, webpage is fairy, uh, fairystamper.com and fairy, fairy Hugs is the uh, name of the company. And here you can see it's a big, beautiful photopolymer stamp. This is not a silicone stamp. Um, Definitely photopolymer made here in the United States. So I am excited to play with these guys and see what we can make out of him. Okay, then we have Luna the whale. This beautiful sunken ship. We have mini starfish. Oyster with pearl. Raphael the turtle. Isn't he beautiful? We have three different size seahorses. Actually, I think these two might be the same size, one solid and one layering maybe, or you could do three separate ones. We have this netting. Now this is called hanging vines, but I looked at it like this to be some kind of aquatic seaweed. And the same thing with this one. This one's called wild leaves. And for me, I'm going to use it as seaweed. So I have all of these free, uh, free stamps. I have all of these wonderful fairy hugs stamps. And uh, let's make a video here. If you want to purchase any of these, you can go to fairystamper.com and get them. I will link that down below. I am using my very last sheet, actually, of Strathmore, Strathmore, I can't talk today, Strathmore mixed media paper and the reason i like this is it's very heavy this is 184 pounds or 300 gsm um, and um, it's super smooth like flat so i can do my mixed media background on it but i'm able to stamp on it where if i were using watercolor paper it's a little difficult to stamp on it and i think i'm going to cut this to five by seven my friend ryan the other day was saying that there are not enough five by seven cards in the world. So let's do five by seven. Um, I don't exactly know what seven is, but we'll just cut a little bit off of the edge here and then I'll figure that out with my regular trimmer later, okay? I'm gonna be using a really easy way to make, for me, a watercolory background, which are using all of these different watercolor powders. So use what you have. Um, I did pick up the Lindy's Magical Shakers and the Lindy's Magical French Lilac Violet and the Gutentag Teal from Fairy Stamper. And th the only difference is this one has a little jar with a lid on it. Okay, and this one just has a shaker top, but they are water activated um, powders. We have Color Sparks, which are the same as um, Color Bursts from Ken Oliver. And then we have some Tonic. This one's Tonic, yeah. Uh, Nouveau Shimmer Powders. I have the Pixie Powders from Cosmic Shimmer. I have Brushos. So there are quite a few companies out there where you can get these water-activated powders. They're very easy to use. They make a really cool, fun background. So I'm going to grab some what I believe to be aquatic colors, some teal, some blue, some green, maybe a sprinkle of purple. Let's make a background and then we'll stamp a couple of our images on top of it. All right, so I'm going to start with the ground layer. I think there should be some brown and green in here and then we'll layer our blue on top. And you just need some paper towel and some water. Um, you might want a paintbrush if you're going to be moving some of your colors around totally okay up to you there's no right or wrong way to do this is totally your interpretation I'm just moving some things off the desk here because it can get a little watery and a little messy 
and I don't want all my beautiful things to get wet, so. All right, so I'm gonna move my little powders over to the side here. I will try to remember to tell you the names as I sprinkle them. And we'll move our stamps over and we'll pull those back out in a minute. All right. I'm going to start with a little bit of spritzing and I'm going to try to keep my spritzing towards the bottom here just by doing this because I want this to be kind of my my ground. And this paper is really nice and heavy duty so it will accept the water and not curl up or peel up too much like regular paper will but it's not bumpy like watercolor paper this is the color sparks terra verte which is a nice green i don't want it to be too dark and a little bit of sprinkle goes a long way again they're water activated so as soon as the water hits that pigment powder it's just gonna bloom and spread out and look really pretty I'm gonna grab my lime green. This is a brusho lime green. And use what you have. You might have um, some companies that mix and match. You might have brushos, you might have um, color bursts. They're, they're pretty similar. I know there's a lot of different companies that make them. Look at how much that blooms, very pretty. I'm gonna add a little bit of darker green with moss green. Just a little bit, not too much. And I think I want a little bit of brown in there. Dark brown. Okay, so that's gonna be the base of our water scene, I'm gonna call it. And again, just gonna spray that. And if you want it to be more watery, you can go in and you know, kind of move your paintbrush around to give it that seaweed-like feel, I will say. Okay, so I really do like that. I don't want to mess with that. And I'm going to take my heat tool and dry it. So I'm going to pause my video while I dry it. All right, so you can see it only took a few moments for me, but it mostly dried. I have a little bit left here that I'm just going to go in with my brush and kind of pull it down and it will reactivate once we do the top part because we're going to continue to add water to this and move it around. So now we're gonna do the top part. So I'm just gonna flip my card upside down here and you can see there's a slight warping, it's not too bad. And the rest of this I want to be, you know, blue. I want it to be water looking. So we're gonna spritz this. Now some of the green may get reactivated as we spritz it, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. And we're just gonna add a whole bunch of different colors of blue. So I have Prussian blue, which is a little bit darker blue. I'm gonna do that towards the bottom. I have this Guten Tag Teal, which is the Lindy's one, and I want the shaker top here. Now that one has some mica in it, so it's gonna, it's gonna leave some shimmer behind, which is always pretty. We have uh, Brusho Turquoise. And a little bit goes a long way. So before I add any more, I'm gonna spritz this and see how much more we need. I'm going to tilt my paper so that everything kind of flows down this way instead of all towards my green area. And I think I wanna add a little bit more water. I do like how the colors are blending, very pretty. I'm going to add a little bit of shimmer with the Nouveau Shimmer Powder. This one's called Atlantis Burst. That has a lot of shimmer and it's like a greenish blue color. And just very light taps, you guys. And I really like the flow of that. I am going to start drying it.
All right, and that was real time, guys. So that did not take very long at all to dry that area. I didn't put too much water on there. Now, I still want to fill in some of the open areas down here that are still kind of white. And I want it to um, have some kind of white areas where like sunlight would be coming in. So all I'm going to do there is I'm going to slightly pull my distress sprayer and it will leave white, uh, wider blobs of water. So that's going to give us the method where we can cause water droplets to reactivate that area it will reconstitute the ink it will then pull and lift it to the surface so we're going to lift that color out so i'm going to give it a second to do that and then you're going to take your paper towels you're going to lift that and you can see how we have that the water spots okay the other thing is i do want to fill in down here but i want to be a little more controlled about that so i'm going to take just a lighter color of maybe the turquoise take a little spritzer spritz on my mat and make my own watercolor. You know, I'm only using one method here of all the beautiful things you can do with these pigment powders. So by doing that, I have my own watercolor here. If it's too dark, I add more water to lighten it up. If it's too light, I add more powder to darken it up. But I really wanna go in and just kind of fill in all of these areas where it's still a little bit white. Okay, and can also go in and flick some of that on there as well. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to clean up this mess here. And now all we're going to do is stamp. So we just want to quick dry it, make sure everything is dry there. That really wasn't too hard to do. There's no rhyme or reason. Just have fun with it. All right, and that was a quick tip for you guys. I sprayed the back of it because I had a lot of warping going on. And by spraying the back of it and re-drying it, you'll notice that my paper is definitely flatter now. So that's gonna make it easier. Okay, so now we want to bring our stamps in. Let's see how many stamps. Let me cut this down to the full five by seven here and bring my bigger trimmer out. So I already have the width by five. I want the length by seven. So I'm just gonna cut this a little bit off the edge so I know I have a true five by seven now so I don't stamp anything off of the edges. And you can use any color, any type of inks to stamp on top of this. You don't need anything um, special. Just make sure that it is completely dry. Otherwise your ink's gonna run. So I definitely want to bring in some of this foliage. I think I'm just gonna use the octopus. I really like him. So let's bring in the foliage. Maybe we can bring this and this guy in. And I don't want to do too much because then it will kind of overpower the scene. Let's see what we got here. And I'm going to use my Versafine Claire inks because they are a nice pigment ink. They're nice and sticky. They go down nice and bright. They sit on top of the paper. So I think we'll get a little bit more impact with them. But use whatever inks you have. All right, so I have everything open. Let me grab some stamping blocks. Of course, you can use your stamp positioner. If you have a Misty or Tim Holtz platform, use what you have. 
And I'm just going to kind of sort of lay out where I think everything will go. All right, I think this will all work. All right, so I'm going to stamp Oscar first. a bigger stamping block. He's pretty he's pretty hefty, you guys. He's a big boy. Mm. All right, he barely fits on my my brand new Simon Hurley acrylic block. I just got these big ones. We should be okay with this. And I think he should be dark purple maybe. Let's see here. Is this dark purple, which is Fantasia. I am gonna put a little piece of foam under under my stamped area too. Hold on. So this is just a little bit of fun foam just to give it a little give because I'm not using my stamp positioner, which I may regret. I should just get my Misty out or my Tim Holtz tool, but oh well, we're already here. I'm going to ink him up nice and dark, nice and purpley. You know, I'm saying to myself, I should be using my Misty, right? <laughs> I hope you guys are saying it along with me. <laughs> All right, let's see. Ta-da! Oh, he didn't come out too bad. I'm not going to complain. He didn't come out too bad at all. Wow, that's, that's pretty. That's really making a statement. Let's move on to some of this greenery. And again, these are supposed to be hanging vines. They're called hanging vines, and I am going to use them as seaweed. And we're going to go in with some dark green here called Shady Lane. Perfect. We're going to do a little bit more this one, one more time. Over here in the corner. There's also a smaller, thinner one. I don't think I'll bring that one in right now. And then I want to bring in this one called Wild Leaves. Same thing. Going to use that as sort of kelp. And we're going to use Rainforest for that, which is a really dark green. Is a smaller one. I am going to bring that in on the back side. Okay.
do one more with the smaller one. And we can always go in and fill in more greenery if we need it. And then we had a cute starfish somewhere. Where did I move him to? We have this little clam. Okay, here we go. Butterfingers here. Come on. All right. Clam and the starfish. Starfish. I'm going to do some charming pink. I don't know how pink he's going to show up with that green background, but let's try it. I want to stamp him off because he's a brand new stamp. So sometimes we have to stamp it off a few times. All right, let's try that again. cute and then our clam I'm gonna do him in medieval blue very dark dark blue and I want to add the seahorses I know I said I didn't want to do too much here but this is doing this is looking too pretty we need the seahorses involved there we go. just the small one all right i'm just taking the small one and going to do orange but I think it'll show through too much so I think I'll go in with the red the dark red glamorous I want him to hide over here there we go and so I think they all look great stamped out but I like to add a little bit of finishing touches with the gel pens. What a quick and easy way to put a scene together, you guys. I'm really, really happy with this. All right, so I want to color in my little shell down here. I'm going to color in my pearl, and then I'm going to go over the pearl with some shimmer pen. So I'm just using a white jelly roll pen here to give it a base. And you can go in with markers, you can go in with color pe color pencils. Again, this is mixed media paper, so it will take pretty much anything you throw at it. And I have some pink jelly roll metallic here. Go in and highlight my jellyfish. I mean my starfish, not jellyfish. Leah would so be upset with me if she knew that I said that. I'm like, Mommy, you took me to the aquarium. And all the details in the stamp, I'm just coloring it in. We have our hidden little seahorse over here. Just going to accentuate him a little bit. All 
right, let's work on this guy. By the way, if you have not tried these, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but these are Pentel Sparkle Pop pens. You guys have got to try these. I mean, gel pens are great, but my friend Jerry sent me these, and oh my gosh, they're so sparkly. They're so bright. I mean, if you like a lot of glitter, these are really, really nice. They're, they're, just, they're just amazing. I love them on doing this kind of work. Um, but these jelly roll pens are nice as well. This is another jelly roll metallic. The jelly roll ones I kind of picked up here and there. I know you can buy them in sets, um, but you can also purchase them a la carte. Someday I'm going to go to Australia and visit my friend Michelle and I'll be able to go see all of this like in Nemo. <laughs> but you can see how quickly we put together this card and although there are a lot of elements to it they came together very quickly very easily I mean the hardest part was just making the background and drying it and that wasn't even that hard you can use distress sprays um, you can use reinkers and do the smush background so you can use you probably already have ink pads that you can use that are water reactive ink pads that you can make this kind of wonderful watercolor background i love doing this because the stamps steal the show when you have a beautiful background like this there's not much you need to do but stamp them down it just draws your eye right to the center and it really looks like you spent a long time making this fabulous piece of art you can see this is really not taking me too much time at all i mean the hardest part is filling in all of these little suckers with metallic pen, but it's so worth it. And anyone who knows me knows I don't like to do a lot of coloring on my cards. So for me to do this means that I think it's totally worth it, which I do. Almost done here. And then you guys will see the final image. Then all I have to do is put it on a card base and then decide if I'm willing to part with it or hoard it and keep it to myself. Does anybody else do that? Do you guys ever make cards that are just so beautiful that you can't stand to part with them? All right, final stretch, you guys. wanted to do a little more life in his eyes. I know his eyes are supposed to be black, but I can't help it. Where is my silver?
There is my underwater sea scene. I am probably getting too far into the weeds with this now, but I can't help it. It's too fun. All right, I'm done playing. It's just it's too beautiful. It's too much fun. I can't help it. Even this guy over here, he's just asking for a little bit more attention. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Go check out the Fairy Hugs stamp at the Fairy Stamper website. A lot of wonderful stamps, not just aquatic like I picked out here, but they have fairies, they have gnomes, they have all kinds of fun stamps that you can make all kinds of beautiful sentiments. Go check it out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, post them down below. I will post in the description where you can purchase all of these beautiful stamps. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye, guys.